as long as this mug is completely like messed up in some way, shape or form, then I think we're, we're in perfect sync. So perfect. hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in, whether it's live or recorded. This is, I think I've, I'll mark this as like episode or video number 17 of like about 30 or 40 of creating for the global virtual design sprint. And today I'm joined with, with, by Andy Davis. He's a director of UX and innovation at a, some company in Fort Worth that I'm, I, we will not mention, but they're just very famous and do great work. I'll just put it that way. And we're gonna be talking about optimizing online and offline work in your virtual design sprint. So similar to the other videos that you may have seen in the past, what we're gonna be doing is riffing off of a mural board, a mural whiteboard, digital whiteboard, which I'll be sharing in just a second. And we've already kind of had a little bit of discussion offline and kind of put in some of our, Andy's put in some thoughts. I'm basically going to add to that. Let me go ahead and put that up for everyone to see um, as soon as I get the right screen in place so that we're not looking at something that doesn't make sense. And I think this is it. Are you seeing what I'm seeing with the, the board that we were working on, Andy? You bet. All right. So we're gonna start with the differences between offline and online work in a virtual design sprint and what we mean by both. So the terminology that we have versus both asynchronous and synchronous. So Andy, would you like to elaborate on those two terms and what they mean in the context of a design sprint, please? But of course. Hmm. Uh, so it's uh, probably a lot of people have heard these terms, but I think it's always good to, to start foundationally when you're talking about uh, you know, optimizing your, your online and offline. And um, so asynchronous is really uh, quite simple and it's just uh, working alone, right? Uh, it's the time that you spend um, kind of incubating your own thoughts or ideas or uh, doing homework or things that you're not doing with others in a, in a digital uh, virtual space. Uh, and then uh, synchronous is when we're all together. Uh, and that's when we come together, uh, usually through a video chat, sometimes through a, a group text chat or of things of that nature, but it's, it's really when we're all together and we need those interactions that are timely and uh, immediate in nature. Uh, so those are the, the two, that's how I define those two. Okay. So when you're talking about offline work or asynchronous work, uh, the first thing we, you put there is that the asynch asynchronous or offline is focused, correct? Yes, yes. And I think uh, being able to, uh, for many people, especially during design sprints, there's a, there can be a lot of information coming at you. And um, it's important to identify either in advance or uh, during the design sprint, those, those pieces of information that really might require the asynchronous uh, work together. Uh, sorry, asynchronous uh, alone time to really kind of process and do some of that deep thinking and maybe even some of your own research and forming your own opinions. Uh, and that's really what uh, the, uh, the offline time is, is designed for. It's really giving you that space to move at the speed that your brain moves and in the way it needs to move to, to achieve what you're after. I'm also going to put it here, uh, offline time means different things for different roles. Yes. So take, for example, if you're a researcher on a virtual design sprint, a lot of your work is going to be done on offline, meaning that you're going to be doing a lot of uh, kind of exploration of the problem space. You may be reaching out early to subject matter experts. You may be thinking ahead of time of who we want, you want to bring in front of your prototype to test. Uh, you're, you're kind of doing a bit of... Uh, of organizing and scheduling that functionally helps the team in many different ways. Whereas if you're a designer, your offline time is gonna be spent around conceptualizing, thinking of desire lines, thinking about what the end result is of the prototype, what kind of resources you're going to need, who you're gonna need help with. So you're gonna approach offline in a different capacity than you said that a researcher. Same thing with an advisor. An advisor, an effective one, is not just basically there to guide the team during the online times. There are people that basically sense when there's a gap in understanding of the skills or even the problem space or something where they're, they're not paying attention to like a blind spot and will basically fill that, that void with some information or some perspective. Say like, you know, what would really help our situation right now with problem framing is to not only think in this fashion, but take a look at this piece or this report that gives some, some context around this particular dimension of what we're thinking about. So it really, offline time, it means different things to different roles. Absolutely, well said. Now in contrast for online in time, so online together, oops, 
I get this thing where I just hit space too many times and it puts that period in from Max. It's annoying. Online together time is for, and you put consensus building. You want to get into that a little bit? Yeah. So uh, uh, I think it, there's there's a lot of things you can do during online time. But one of the things that I, I think is probably most beneficial is is those moments during activities during a sprint where you need to begin to understand where the team is beginning to align and what ideas and themes are beginning to resonate. And uh, being able to do that together in a, in a synchronous mode online together is uh, usually the most efficient way to do that. Um, especially if you feel like uh, you've developed enough, uh, uh, enough empathy uh, around the topic or the situation. So, um, you know, consensus building can, can take pl can look like voting. It can be heat maps. It might be just conversation. Uh, it could be access of interest, you know, any of these things that require that, that real time feedback and, and understanding. And, you know, sometimes consensus feeds into a whole nother dynamic and being able to kind of shape shift into that uh, when you're together online is very beneficial for the team during a sprint. Yep. I put in here building an agenda where group decision making is needed. So a lot of the discussion sometimes and a lot of the work that happens offline is going to need some some time together to kind of work through some things that aren't trans doesn't don't translate very well just through text. So it's important to kind of build up the agenda and have people add to it where they want to put in what they'd like to discuss or what they'd like to make a decision on. So it would help that person or a small group of people that are working on some dimension of the design sprint move forward. And with that, you have to think of time boxing as being important, but not gospel. So that's a trap that facilitators get in where they, you've seen some of the ones in Europe where they're basically like five minutes for discussion, 10 or 10 minutes for like the exercise, five minutes for dot voting. And literally it's like somebody writes out an entire Expel spreadsheet of 50 lines and I, I would be willing to put money down that unless you have somebody who's militant, it never goes to plan. So the best thing to do is to basically be like have general fuzzy lines on where things are, especially with breaks and other stuff. But uh, to get a handle and to emphasize that there are certain things on the agenda that need discussing and you don't want it to keep anybody over. So keep things capped. If there's conversations that need to happen offline, then that's where a facilitator could be most effective with that. Yeah, and I think uh, in support of that as well, uh, you know, when you're starting off your sprint or activities, you know, I always really like to emphasize progress over perfection um, because it's so easy to fall into the trap of trying to make everything perfect and perfect is the enemy of time. And um, so it's, it's usually when you express that at the beginning, it gives people the permission, whoever's managing those time boxes or if you're facilitating to really say, okay, guys, I, I think we have enough here. It's not perfect, but I think we have enough to keep moving forward. And there's always moments where it won't feel right. And that's where advisors and facilitators that are skilled can, can find that balance. One thing about offline time that I'll also remark on is that offline is much more flexible. And that may seem like it's, it's, kind, of, um, it's kind of obvious on its face, but online time, you may find that as that clock ticks, you, you tend to be not as flexible as you do. You, and it's usually in retrospect, you look at it and say, well, you know, we spent 40 minutes discussing things down a rabbit hole that really didn't make much sense for the overall picture of what we're trying to do with the long-term goal. But offline is, is much more flexible in the sense that the conversations, the conversations around the material, around the concepts and, um, and ideas can be well thought out you can basically take your time to really get, understand and absorb what you want. You can give your time, your, your mind, some, some, uh, some time out so that basically if you want to get take care of dinner or what you have to be with the kids, you come back to it. There's always that, that, that frame of reference you can go with. Um, the other thing is, is that offline also allows work like set, like being able to create your own stuff. Also, it allows for, um, uh, it allows for, um, uh, moments of insight and uh, small introspection. So what I mean by that is, is that you don't necessarily have to wait until the team gets together to talk about an idea. You could basically go on WhatsApp, hit up somebody that you know is going to be available around this time or just say, is anybody here? I, got a, I, I have an idea about something. And it can basically cascade over a number of, a number of uh, like even 24 hour period before your next session where there's going to be that context around the conversation. It could be a quick catch up, but it speeds up 
whatever conversation you could have if you were kind of in an online environment and you only had those two hours to work with. Yeah, I think that's that's such a key uh, key thing, and that is you know using your other communication channels. I think you know you don't want to get caught in the trap of thinking asynchronous is I'm completely alone, right? It's it's a there's many other ways to uh, to engage the team, and uh, whether it's one on one, and I, I I think those are asynchronous. I I think there are times where you do need to to kind of start some threads and get some reactions. And, and uh, that's still another form of asynchronous uh, collaboration. Well, what if a, a team just basically just uh, communicated in nothing but emojis? That'd be interesting. <laughs> I think there's a challenge in there somewhere. I think well, now that Snapchat is back on, or our Snap camera is back on the menu it's yeah. about for, uh, for what we're doing with Zoom, I think we're gonna be uh, seeing more of that probably this time around. Awesome. Okay, so what should you do during your online time together in a virtual design sprint? Now, this is going to be more of an opinion piece for the both of us. Andy, yeah. you're a three-time best of the best in GBDS. So you basically have not only rallied people together around uh, their activities when they're online together, but you also know the system very well. So I'm going to lean on you a little bit with this topic and that you kind of put in your thoughts here. So yeah. one of the things you should definitely do in your online time together is the first one is collaborate. Can you kind of get into that a bit? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, collaborate's kind of a broad term, uh, but uh, you know, it's it's that it's that time together where um, those interactions become uh, dynamic, right? And it's it, they lead you places that you just wouldn't go otherwise if you were uh, uh, alone. And uh, you know, one of the things I think I've got up here is kind of that whole concept of yes and, right? Being able to do yes and uh, asynchronously would be difficult, but being able to do that together uh, represents some, some amazing ways that you can riff on each other's ideas, find that inspiration and uh, lead down paths that you just would not go down otherwise. And it's this whole idea of, of people coming together and using, um, you know, various, you know, you've got multiple brains in the mix, they're all working differently. And being able to harness the fruit of that is always to me, what's most amazing about any collaboration activity, especially when we're together. And, and that, um, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, I was gonna say that gets into sharing thoughts and reactions. So you also put yeah. real time interactions that require real time reaction processing. Yeah. So have there been certain uh, activities within the design sprint that kind of fit this model where you, you definitely need to be on the same page and uh, working at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's, uh, you know, some of the, the ideation activities, uh, obviously, or when you get into how might we, um, you know, e even during a design sprint, you're, there's the, the concept of kind of working alone together, but, you know, you can't, you can't avoid looking kind of across the board and looking at someone else writing something. And then all of a sudden your brain just goes five other places and you've got even more inspiration. And so you get, get all these kind of unintended um, uh, collisions uh, during these activities, even when you're working alone together during them. And uh, I think they, that again is what kind of creates that special mix, uh, that special ingredient that, that uh, you know, design sprints tend to, to, be so desirable for people to attend to be a part of um you know there uh, I, I particularly i love the uh, eisenhower charts uh, i think those are always so engaging uh watching people kind of present their ideas um you know you get into access of interest uh and just getting that real time you know everyone's hovering on that line somewhere and you're trying to position things you know these things are so difficult to do otherwise and you get that spontaneity uh that really um kind of gets you that gut reaction which many many times is the right choice and, and trying to foster a gut reaction in other ways is, is challenging Another thing also is you put in here empathy and understanding of each other and how you work, which is something that's, it's the camaraderie that happens. The respect for other, other's opinions I added to that, where you kind of get, you have an appreciation of um, what people bring to the table that you, that doesn't translate sometimes when you just get their, their, um, their, their job title. And that's what you know them for. Yeah. You kind of, you kind of start to see how people take information kind of construct it in their head and then present it in a way that other people can understand it. Um, 
that that's something where that collaboration or that camaraderie comes into play where you're starting to really sync up with how people kind of approach the problems and it gives you a new perspective as well. Yeah. Um, Finding, you know, learning about each other is, is so, uh, uh, again, it, it, it's, it's what makes design sprints and collaboration fun, right? Uh, especially yeah. if you have a, an exploratory mindset, you know, and discovering how people function and, and what they like uh, really can be uh, a great uh, seasoning to your uh, design sprint. And you've put in here organizing and collecting feedback. Uh, how is that a uh, good, uh, well, how would you say that's a, that's a good practice to have when it comes to being offline, online together? Are you talking about like how you would uh, collect them on a, like a mural board or uh, have getting people's, uh, like just their, what people submit during their activities? What were you thinking about when you put this one? Yeah, so uh, definitely a mural board comes into play when you're, especially when you're trying to affinitize or create, uh, get thematic uh, organization to the inputs. Uh, again, you begin to see how people uh, begin to catalog their, their thoughts and ideas, and you start seeing, you know, uh, themes and, uh, uh, and categories sort of uh, change uh, during that process. Uh, I think that's always very interesting. Um, I think, uh, you know, just being able to collect that feedback of, you know, uh, next steps, right? Organizing the sprint or collecting feedback on the value of, of everyone's time today. You know, how, how did the, how did the, the activities go? Um, and then, you know, um, towards, towards the end of, of each day, or certainly towards the end of a sprint is really collecting that feedback and trying to understand what went well. Uh, I think being able to do that, uh, you can do those, some of that uh, asynchronously, but um, having some rich conversation around that synchronously is always very, very helpful and, and really kind of teases out even more uh, detail uh, and empathy for, for uh, some of the opinions. I have also added to add, have a designated timekeeper. Uh, this is something that you probably need for, for if your group is recognizable as somebody that likes to really talk out the people's point of view and really people really glom on conversation, which is just natural, especially if people are natural people, uh, they're people, people persons. The, if they're, they're very attuned to in-person, uh, interpersonal conversation and trying to translate in an online environment can be frustrating. So it's, it's a good idea to kind of make sure that people understand where they have the freedom to kind of go off and kind of have conversations versus when they kind of have to kind of keep it straight. But also it's not, it's not a matter of if you have a timekeeper, them being like, you will do this and do that. It's like having fun with the reminders in terms of how long somebody has, you know, like one, one, I remember one session somebody attributed the time to when they have to go to the bathroom. So it's like they're, that they use toddler kind of like pictures. So right now the toddler is very happy and then he's getting a little hungry and now he really has to go to the bathroom and now he's super has to go to the bathroom <laughs> and he has to get his homework done before that bathroom, before everything goes. And if you're over time, then you have the unfortunate image of the kid like crying yeah. with his, his pants wet. Or you could just say that, that basically he's, he's converted into a baby as diapers, but that was, that was one kind of interesting way of doing it. Another one was like the age of a person. You start with a baby and then you get a little bit older as you go on there. So right. by the time that you're at the end of the session, there's like this guy that basically is a cane, can't hear very well. And it, <laughs> it was funny because it reflected a lot of the people's mental state because they're like, I've been doing this for so long. I feel just like that guy. So they start drawing on him. They would put their face and yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. And the, the other thing that, um, that every team should be mindful of is technology. Uh, and that's one of the big things, you know, online together is, is really, um, you know, you can have a variety of expertise around technology from people that are beginners or users, but don't really consider themselves um, advanced to people that are advanced and, and trying to find a, a balance and harmony in that equation. Um, when I'm, when I'm kicking off a sprint, I always try to, to have meaningful conversation around that and really try and help people understand that, that uh, we're here to support, but you do, you do have to kind of own your own technology use. Right. And you've got to, you don't have to be a master of your domain, but you, you do need to uh, need to uh, figure out how to make it work for you. And, uh, and the team will rally around you and support you as best we can. 
one of the things that I'm going to be emphasizing in GVDS five is there'll be a there'll be a certain baseline that that you should be at in terms of understanding certain online tools like Zoom and Mural are are the two that I I frequent a lot. But I'm going to do a little bit of inquiry during the kickoff around what people are currently using to do their work now. And if there are aligned, there, there are some parallels and some commonalities between a lot of different practitioners, I'm going to say, well, why don't we just do this? If everyone just uses Google Docs, let's see how we can leverage this because then you have that knowledge of the tool baked in. You don't have to go, let's go to Notion and we can like learn a new platform because you've added that learning curve to them when they really didn't maybe expect it. So yeah. Um, yeah. That'll be part of that kind of conversation. And there's there's always a group that's like, oh, a new tool, check it out. And then there's another group, which is, I'm here to do the sprint. Tools are cool, but <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to learn the framework. And, and and it's just understanding your team, right? And doing that, yeah. when you get when you are together, then you can begin to sort of feel that and go, okay, where are we? Um, yeah. Simple is better. Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's always good to try to give an outlet to someone if they want to try new stuff or, or say like, why don't you showcase this? I'll, and I'll actually show you how to share it on social media so people can recognize you as someone that does that if you don't already do it already. So then you can actually Absolutely. like make good use of it. Um, okay. So let's switch. Now we're offline time alone. We're, we're kind of away from like the online kind of get together time. So what should somebody be doing if they're in a virtual design sprint and they're in their offline time alone phase? What are some ideal things that they should do? You know, eat. Yeah, get, there you go. Eat, uh, sleep, get some rest. Pet the dog. Right? Take care of uh, yourself. Take care of yourself. Don't do what you so don't, don't do this. Uh, take care of yourself. Shave. Um, be nice to people. Uh, like uh, wear, wear, um, wear clean clothes. Um, call your parents if you haven't talked to them in a while <laughs> and then <Why> not? <laughs> yeah or not yes i'll put or not or not and and then work on your sprint stuff yes and i know we're joking here but it's it's important you 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 want to understand that you're here to learn but this has got to be contextual to everything else that's going on so Part of the reason why we're emphasizing offline time is because for many people in the month of October, that's crunch time at work where people are going to be trying to get things out the door before the fiscal year, before the holidays, because they know that everyone else is going to go offline. And sometimes there's going to be unexpected things that come up and they already have with scheduling where people are going, look, I thought I was going to have this much time and I really don't. So now I have to kind of take a step back and see what I can do with things. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, an, another big part of, of, your offline time is just managing it, right? I think um, you you have to be diligent about carving that time out and blocking the time that you need for how you work when you're working offline, right? Some people, um, uh, I tend to be this way, so, you know, especially if there's a lot of thinking, you know, there's some researching I need to do, but then I've got to have the idea sitting about in my brain while I'm doing something else while I can think about it, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of I kind of let that percolate. Other people need to really block that time and say, okay, I need that 30 minutes or that hour to really focus and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to craft my thought or perform my activity in that time and, and then I'm done. I've got to move on. So understanding how you operate is very important and I would say embrace that, uh, but commit time, commit making it a, a deliberate act and not just a, a, a I, it'll, it'll happen some way, but I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and this really sort of parlays into what I've seen uh, happen on many, not many occasions, but it, it happens with some frequency. And that is um, understanding when you're biting off more than you should bite off. And I, I'm a big believer in stretch goals, but you also want to be mindful that um, if you are unable to deliver or bite off at everything that you committed to, then that could have an adverse impact on the rest of the team and how they're, tr how they're trying to function and move forward. Right. And things happen. So it's not that there's any perfection in this, but I think uh, understanding that dynamic for yourself and for the team is important. Yeah. And I think that shouldn't be overstated. It's like, and I'm going to put there is what you should do during your, your, your offline time. Don't do other people's work. Yeah. Don't do it. 
especially if you feel like the sprint is starting to go in a direction where people aren't contributing as much, but it's not, doesn't meet your standard. Uh, this is a danger point because what you do is you let people off the hook for actually being able to contribute in a meaningful way and showcase what they can do. If you're the person that basically is the, 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 like the thing where, where nobody's like responding to anything, then that's just how it is. You don't necessarily have to be the person that saves the day, though that that in the past people have felt like they had to do that and everyone's been grateful about it. But yeah. you have to hold the people to account. So a nice way of doing that is just basically going, okay, uh, I'll just pay hold people accountable to what they signed up for in a in a nice way. Meaning that you can give the reminders, but if all else fails, then you call, you say, uh, reach out to Robert to give some tough love, which I don't mind doing. Because sometimes it's a matter of, okay, there may be some tough love or understanding what's going on. Because there was a person that was dealing with their family, have somebody having COVID really badly and didn't want to have it as a topic of conversation with the facilitator or anybody else they were talking to but it was a major, uh, major thing that was happening in their life and it would just it occurred right before Sprint Week was starting. And people perceived their non-engagement as like not caring about anybody else. But in reality, they had so many things going on in their head and, and in their family that they really couldn't make heads or tails of things. So yeah. it's, it's basically, you still don't want to fill in for other people, but you do want to sound the alarm early. Uh, if something is amiss where there, there's just one person that doesn't seem to be going to the meetings, especially after Monday, um, you can send a, me a message out and basically tag me and say like, okay, you know, what happened? Maybe it was like a, a, a loose connection on your router or something else, but um, don't do other people's work, but hold people accountable to what they say, but what they sign up for in a nice way, but in a nice way with empathy. How about that? Absolutely. I'm trying, I'm trying to say. And the other thing, and, and this is really probably, I mean, this is for all GVDS, but especially when you're online together and, but, but don't forget to do it offline. Uh, and this is in the spirit of world gratitude day, which was yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Show gratitude to your teammates, find ways to appreciate and highlight any contribution they give, no matter how small. Um, oftentimes people need to feel like they're contributing and sometimes in design sprints, they can feel like they're not and, um, uh, highlight those behaviors as a facilitator, or even as a teammate, highlight the things that you're appreciating and make mention of them either through uh, one-off chats or, you know, celebrate it during the start or end of each, each day of the sprint, whatever it is. Um, there's, uh, Needless to say, there's a ton of psychology around that and it only makes a team better. Yep. Um, I had a thought and I lost it, um, which happens, A, it happens a lot more these days than normal, but I won't get into that. Um, I, oh, another one thing you ought to do in, in re relation to showing gratitude to your teammates is setting uh, proper expectations. Yeah. So that kind of goes, it, it's a theme that's running through some of these, these um, expectations that's kind of running through these other notes. But one of the things is, is like letting people know in advance if there's been something, if, if something's happened, right? Yeah. It could be, be an offline occurrence. It could be where there's construction going on, the power's out whatever you can, usually there's, well, there's a way of doing it, but that's, that's part of the accountability piece of this, but setting proper expectations with teammates is probably where I should go with this. Um, and one thing I'll add over here with during your offline time alone is to, uh, is beyond all, doing all these other things is, is manage your time and scheduling. Um, you want to be able to uh, uh, practice um, sharing on social media. And why I mean by that is, is that you have to get into the, the idea that there's going to be life after the design sprint and life after your existing job and life after your existing whatever. And sometimes if you want to have an historical narrative about what you do and who you are, um, even, if you, even if you're not after the likes and the follows, social media is a great tool for people. If you just basically uh, do a search on Andy Davis, you're not only going to find things that he does currently, but you're going to see a lot of the GVDS stuff especially if it's cross-linked the way I do it. Because part of, the, part of the whole thing about doing this event is 
We're trying to promote the best professional versions of people that are part of this event and not necessarily just doing it for the sake of doing it. There's got to be some, some benefit to other people in terms of sharing what they do and how, what they know. So being able to practice what this sh social media aspect is huge, but that's something that you could definitely learn on your offline time. In fact, they're probably going to set up a channel um, in, in the Slack around social media and how you could basically some best practices in doing that so people can start learning how to get that done. Um, yeah, and I you can't have echo you, that enough. Do you have any other thoughts before we close? Because I know we have the, we're at the top of the hour and we got a boogie. Yeah, no, uh, I think this is obviously we could probably spend a day talking about this, but you know, I would just encourage everyone, you know, take these things to heart, uh, look at them, understand kind of what they mean for you and your team, and uh, you know, build on it. Right? You may come up with with uh, additional things that work well for your team, and if you do, share them. Right? Share them out on the Slack channels. Uh, help everyone learn from what you learn and uh, together we all uh, evolve and grow. Start building the reputation that you want to do with the community. And that can basically be something that's diametrically different from what people know you for, for other places, but it's a way of building upon your narrative so that you, people can really understand what you're all about. And other people can vouch for you too, which is part of what the GBDS is meant to do. Um, okay, so we really brief, we went over the offline and uh, the differences between offline and online work in a virtual design sprint, what you should do for your online time versus what you should do during your offline time. Uh, if you want to discover who Andy Davis is, I suggest looking him up on LinkedIn. He's the one with the black and white kind of looking over the, the side kind of photo if you do find him and it'll be linked in the comments. Andy, I want to appreciate you coming by and having this conversation with me. I'm sure we're going to be talking more and working more in the coming weeks, but I really do uh, appreciate your perspective on this. My pleasure. Thanks, Robert. And uh, looking forward to it. Right. So anyone that's watching live, thank you very much for doing so. If you're watching this recording, please leave a comment and let us know what you thought of it. If you have any questions, do hit us up on LinkedIn, on, on YouTube, on Twitter, on all sorts of social media, you'll find us. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you later, Andy. I'll See talk you. to you later, right? Take care. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.